I've never recorded you guys before. This, wait, I have to make an announcement in my recording. This would be the 8 o'clock boring class. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, in, um, if you're on a problem, ask my instructor, it will email me your exact okay. problem, okay. which is nice because if, if, if you just say, Cindy, can you go look at, go work number three, then my, my numbers may be different than yours. Okay. Like yours may have been the sign of that stuff. But if you hit ask my instructor, I get a link that takes me straight to your problem. And that's the best way to ask me. Okay, actually this class is talking to me this morning. They must all be drunk, huh? All right, so... This is the introduction to the precise definition of a limit. To really build your confidence up, <laughs> beers are opening. To really build your confidence up, this is the section that kills students. <laughs> Woohoo! All right. Um, it, it is, uh, it's because it's, again, very theoretical. Um, you know, a lot of students have trouble with the why behind it, and let's hope I can kind of explain it today to you. I know I mentioned to you guys before about the whole measuring cup thing. You're making a potatoes, you're measuring exactly two cups. Can't get exactly two cups, you're a little bit above, you're a little bit below. Is that enough to ruin the potatoes? Well, here is a example that says, have you ever wondered why the stripes on a one liter measuring cup are about a millimeter apart? I know this has kept you up many nights, right? What we're going to do is we're gonna go through an example with a one liter measuring cup, a right circular cylinder with a radius of six centimeters. So the volume of the liquid put in the cup is a function to the level of the height of the liquid. So this is my formula, okay? My volume equals pi times the radius squared times what the radius was. So why not now I have my function? All right, we're going to kind of set that to the side and talk about what we're going to do with this, and then we'll... All right, so how closely must we measure H to measure out one liter of water, okay, or 1,000 cubic centimeters, with an error of no more than 1%. This is what I keep telling you with the um, H value. What do, I, what do I pick for H? Well, in a perfect world, you want it to go to zero. It's not a perfect world. Can I live with 1%? And that's my question here is, is 1% good enough? If it's not, then you may run the test again if you could get it a little bit less, you know, a half a percent. But we're going to look. So what that means is we need to keep our inequality, okay? So we're gonna keep our inequality, our volume. Um, this, is, we're, this is what we're trying to measure out. We're gonna keep it within this error. This is my 1%, okay, right there. And so we know how to, hopefully we, meaning all of us, know how to work inequality is plug in what our function is, and that's my 36 pi h. And remember from algebra, you do the left side's negative and the right side's positive if this is a less than or greater than. Okay, less than, all right, less than. Um, and so now all I'm going to do is go through the algebra, and as I keep saying over and over and over, students that struggle in calculus, it's because they struggled in algebra. This, this, that's all this is, it's just algebra. So 1,000 to all three pieces. Okay, I'm trying to get H by itself. Then I'm going to divide, and don't forget these slides are in that thing, blackboard, and then I'm going to divide everything by 36 pi, this answer. Well, I mean, the big thing, and once we do more with applications, is we want to know, well, first, before I say, what does this even mean, notice I say round up and round down. Hopefully, that kind of makes sense to you, because if this is my target, I'm going to be a little bit above it and a little bit below it, right? Well, if I round this up and round this down, it makes that gap even closer. So that gives me a little bit more precision. And so what this means is this says we should hold this interval, the 8.9 minus 8.8 .8 equals 0 0.1 centimeters wide, or about one millimeter, which is the lines on a measuring cup, which gives 1% accuracy, which for most people is good enough, okay, in cooking we just did is the precise definition of a limit. Okay, that, that's it. And so you've seen this already. It says we have some function. It's in some interval. I have a point of interest. Except that, ag that exact point may not even be in the domain of my function. We've seen that before. I couldn't divide by zero. So we say that the limit of our function as x approaches this in point of interest 
is this number L, and this is how we write it. So we've done that already, okay? You've seen this, you had a function there, what did you do? What well, we just did, an example, we plugged in um, that negative four pi, and so we had an example where we just plugged in that and we got our limit. So that's nothing new. All right, down here. If for every number epsilon greater than zero, there exists a corresponding number delta greater than zero, such that for all x, I'm already tired of reading and this makes absolutely no sense to me. All right, the way I think about this, and it'll look better on the next slide, is I say I'm interested in some error. It's kind of nice they use epsilon because it looks like an E, E for error. I, I have some error that I know about, my measuring cup, 1%. I'm okay with that. What do I need to input to ensure I get that error to stay within my interest, okay, my one liter, whatever I'm doing? And that's all this means. So I think of this piece more of my output, and this is what I know. I know what um, error I can handle, you know, the machine can handle, whatever, and this is what I want to know. What you want, what I want, what I want. Ain't this what we all want? R E S P E C T. Y'all ain't even old enough to know that song. All right. Okay, so anyway, this certainly looks easier to understand with pictures. So with a picture here, it says make my epsilon. This is my limit. This is what I would like to get. I would like to get exactly one liter. Ain't going to happen, right? So I could be above it or below it. I could be off by 1%. Let's just stick with the measuring cup. So I know, I know this is what I come up with. If I come up with this, can I find this value, my x naught, within some other intervals? So in other words, if I have just say <clears throat> some crazy looking function here, and I know I want to stay within those limits, okay? That's my error. I know that's what I want to do. Then what I end up doing is I make an interval, say, around it, and I can even make it closer, that says, well, my interval says I better pick something within there. Otherwise, if I pick something too far, then I, I've got too much error. It's more error than what I want, okay? It may not be too much error. And so that's eventually what we want to do is we want to say, well, you tell me how much error and then we will figure out what we need our input. This is our output, what we need our input x values, the x naught. So in other words, the value of delta, the delta is the distance here from my point of interest. Okay, it can be here, 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 wherever. And this will, like you saw in that last picture I grew of the function, this will actually depend on what you set so always begin with an error greater than zero, duh, you're going to have some error, okay? You can't get away from that. And then determine the appropriate corresponding, in other words, this distance here. You figure this out, begin with some error that you can live with, and then you calculate this. You must ensure that the function is defined, so in other words, you can't have a jump, you know, the things we talked about, around some interval, but I keep saying this over and over and over, it may not actually, you may actually have something like this with a hole right there, okay? Pretend I actually got that above that x naught. Meaning, howdy, meaning that, we won't mention that you're late, 15 minutes. <laughs> meaning that um, this point may not be in the domain, okay? As we've said before, it could be divided by zero. It could be we'll get to things where um, you can't take negative square roots and all that, all that good stuff. All right, um, limits do not care what is happening at the point, only around the point. This is what you have to get. I think, you know, I told my class yesterday, wouldn't this be a good drinking game? Every time I said the word point, you had to drink. <laughs> I can't think of how I cannot say point, and I'm tired of saying point, 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 point. Okay, so anyway, take a drink. Um, what this means, and I hope you really understand this for today, for your quiz, is we've said before, let's say this is the value at x naught. We don't care what the value is. We care what's happening as you get close. And I've, I've sat with some students um, yesterday, um, you know, going through a bunch of examples of the graphs, and they keep your eyeball just goes right there because it's solid. I don't know why. And it's I don't care what's the value of this function. I care what's happening as I'm getting close to that value. The limit is the near part. So this definition does not tell us how to find a limit, 
But what we can actually use this for, which we will, is um, to verify that a limit is correct. Maybe that's why students struggle with this, this section. So we need to know what my input is to get a particular output within some error. Okay, so this is what you've, you keep hearing me say. I know what I want to get out of this machine. Tell me what I need to put, you know, I don't know what I want to get out of this um, measuring cup. I want to get some nice potatoes, you know. Well, how much water do I put in? Okay, so, something like that. So watching the value of the function as x approaches x naught. So in other words, I would like this to get closer and closer and closer. I'd like this interval to be small. Okay, I don't like real wide intervals. Well, hopefully it makes sense then it depends on this interval, the width of this interval. So if we, let's say we want to stay within one-tenth of a unit within the limit, then I can figure out which x value. And so each time we get some new interval about this x naught, then this, this will satisfy, of course, my tolerance. Now, what you're going to see, and, and somebody in my other class um, mentioned, we're going to use this piece a lot to center around x naught. And they said, why do we care if it's centered? Well, in a perfect world, we don't. You're not in a perfect world. You're in math class, right? It's not nowhere near perfect. So this is kind of an interesting example, I think. This is in your book. It says the skeptic presents an error, an epsilon. It says, I bet you can't get within 1%. And the scholar comes back and says, I bet I can. And so the first thing, my skeptic says, I bet you cannot stay within this one-tenth of what I want. This is the value I want to get out. I bet you can't stay within plus or minus one-tenth. And so he says, I bet I can. I bet I can find an interval that will keep me within this error. And that's what you're doing with this, is you're, you're given this information and you're trying to find your interval here. That's kind of the step one. Find this interval, then you'll see step two, we center the interval. So then well, if you can do that, well, let's make this a little bit, you know, smaller, which would make sense. You want less error, well, no problem. I just make this interval smaller. So it's kind of with the pictures to me, I keep saying, well, I want it point with either one, something you can live with, okay, or two, where you finally get to a point, um, you know, maybe your measuring device won't measure any smaller than this, this error right here, and then you're done. But it, hopefully, as you can see, what's happening this is getting smaller, and, and we just continue to go through this until finally we would love to get something like this because this is almost actually hitting that point. And this is my, my interest value, and so if I can get something to hit pretty close to that point. So, once again, here's the same definition. We want to ensure ourselves some particular precision. We want to stay within some error, again, 1%, whatever, whatever we're doing. And then this is, <coughs> this is going to tell me my range of my input values. Okay, so let's, let's do it. Sure. 2.3. Precise. 